ruler of the universe who makes us holy with commandments, commanding us to light the Sabbath candles. And now Ellie is going to unmute herself and sing the blessing for us. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Aolam, Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotav, Betsivanu, Lehad Likner, Lehad Likner, Shel Shabbat. Amen. I'd like to uh, remind people to mute themselves. Ellie, there may be times when I accidentally mute you and, and you'll have to unmute yourself. Welcome, everybody. We are so thrilled to be inviting uh, Ellie Flyer back. She did a Havdalah program for us way back in May, and we were delighted. She has Thank since you. started her third decade, and happy birthday to her for that. She turned, told us that she turned 30 recently, even though she could certainly pass for much younger. And uh, with the Havdalah, she gave us a little bit of taste of lots of different kinds of songs and prayers tonight. She is going to lead most of the Shabbat service, but some of these are going to be her own interpretations of some of the prayers. And we have this wonderful opportunity to have, to welcome Shabbat with this kind of creativity, and especially just a couple of weeks before Rosh Hashanah, as we get our spirits ready and together to welcome Shabbat. And so as we receive the Sabbath, that we learn from the Psalms how good and pleasant it is for brothers and sisters to be together. And as we're together from all our different computers, Ellie's going to sing us this Psalm, Hinei Matovu Manayim Shevar Achim Gam Yachad, how good it is to be together. Thank you. We receive Shabbat like one receives a bride. Lachadodi comes from the Kabbalists in Svat, who took their hearts to such a great amount of joy. And Ellie has embraced this song in a special way that will both teach us and help us feel the, that way of receiving Shabbat. The moment when we say Lechad Odi for me is the true moment in which we welcome in Shabbat. Uh, and many weeks after long, hard weeks, it's such a sigh of relief to be able to finally get to this point and think, ah, Shabbat is finally here. So I wrote a Lechad Odi that describes the feeling that I have when we sing Lechad Odi. Lecha do di li kraut kala fene shabbat eka bela lecha do di li kraut kala fene shabbat eka bela It's 
been a week to remember and we sit here together as the sunlight disappears the candles shine brighter and our spirits grow lighter Shabbat is finally here as Shabbat is finally join that spirit of Shabbat and bring it together. We see that we've got a little bit of tradition and a little bit of country. We've got the Nashville flavor here. And now we're ready to bring our prayers together. Bar who is our call to worship? And Bar who leads us into Shema? As we prepare for Shema, we indicate our readiness to pray. And Ellie is also written a song about this introduction to prayer and also a special via hafta connecting our love to god and so we're just going to enjoy and learn from ellie through barhu shema and via hafta sing after me lai la lai 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 Baruchu we bless you Baruchu we bless Adonai you are our God Adonai you are Amen Blessing to us all, you bring blessing.
now time for the Shema, our most important prayer. Let's take this time together. Let's take a breath. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Hear, O Israel, the Eternal One is our God, the Eternal God alone. Blessed is God's glorious majesty forever and ever, and we shall love the Lord our God. I wanted to explore the idea, what does it mean to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our strength, with all our soul? What does that mean? What does that mean in the world that we live in? This is what I think it means. Let love guide your hands as they touch the world. Let love guide your lips Kind words Let love guide your legs When you leave your home Let love guide your ears When you listen close For we are all God's hands For we are all God's lips For we are all God's legs And we are all God's ears It's up to us to love. There are signs in the world. If we choose to see such wonder in the world, and they're no For we are
And it's up to us to love. As we take that idea that it's up to us to love, we remember how much we need to put into the world, how much we need to be able to give our love and receive. And the beautiful blessings that we have, the miracles that we have of friendship, of love, of understanding that when we give our heart, that we do receive one of the greatest gifts, the exciting gift that we received was the gift of crossing the Sea of Reeds. And we pray from the Torah, it says, Mi Mocha by Elim Adonai. And other songwriters who've come before Ellie, like Debbie Friedman, have created beautiful melodies to this, to this prayer. Tonight, Ellie is going to gift us with a melody from Debbie Friedman for the prayer, but also a song of her own that brings us through that kind of a journey. Someone gave me a little uh, kitschy book called Six Word Memoirs on Jewish Life. <laughs> it was a book just with literal six word, exactly, phrases on all kinds of things, sad things, funny things, deep things. And there was one that I read that made me go, oh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> this, these six words define why I love being Jewish. It said, we're still wandering, but not lost. The song is called Wandering. Forty years in the desert, forty days in the rain, five thousand long years where nothing stays the same. Our path may wind and weave, but faith can lead the way. Don't know our destination, but we'll head there anyway. We're wandering, just like those who came before us. We're wandering for all those yet to come. And God only knows what seas and deserts we will cross So we're wandering But never lost We're a people full of questions That's always been our way Our answers come in meanings that shift and change each day We'll grapple with a narrow place 
and parting of the sea. There's not one truth to find, but we love the journey. We're wandering, just like those who came before us. We're wandering for all those yet to come. And God only knows what seas and deserts we will cross. So we're wandering, but never lost. For those we've loved, the door of door. For those we've lost and we've mourned for, let our memory be our guide. For our children yet to be, for our future history. In our love will we survive We're wandering Just like those who came before us We're wandering For all those yet to come And God only knows what seas and deserts we will cross So we're wandering But never lost Never lost. Never lost. I need to find that book of six word phrases. We are wandering, but never lost. Six words. And six words is also Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. It's interesting how we can capsulize so much into six words. Of course, God did creation in six days. And the seventh day completes us. Shabbat completes us. And six more words, we shall protect the Sabbath day. This is what we sing when we sing the Shamri. We shall protect the Sabbath day. That that seventh day, for those six words are the sounds. The seventh is the silence. We shall protect the Sabbath day in six words. The Shamru, expressing our joy for the gift of Shabbat. Just as we began our service by greeting each other with Shabbat Shalom. Shalom is that completion. We say Shabbat Shalom and the word Shalom itself, in addition to peace, means complete. That we ask for a complete peace. 
And so on Shabbat, we sing Shalom Rav al Yisrael Amcha, that this is the peace that we ask for. Grant peace to all your people, Israel, to all people all over the world, and bring us peace with love and with blessing. Shalom Rav al Yisrael Amcha, Tassim Leolam, Shalom Rav. Let's take a few moments of quiet, silent prayer, each of us connecting with God in our own way. Holy One, 
who makes peace in heaven. We pray to bring us peace to us, to all Israel, and to all humanity. O Seshanom. Amen. Oh, dear friends, we are now in the month of Elul. And Elul is the month before Rosh Hashanah where we reconnect with God. And God reconnects with us. And during the Torah reading for the month of Elul, we have some interesting passages. And when I study Torah, and teach about Torah. I usually like to teach about my favorite passages and gloss over the ones I'm not as comfortable with. This Torah portion has beautiful parts that teach us how to love our neighbor and difficult parts in which we are taught about punitive actions. And I have a hard time with it, especially coming up on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur when I am concerned about the punishments. I don't want to be punished. I want mercy. I want kindness. And I look at some of the things that this Torah portion brings up. There are 74 laws in this Torah portion. 74. More than any other Torah portion in the entire Torah. 74 different laws, and some of them are hard to understand. One of them, toward the beginning of the Torah portion, talks about a son who is disrespectful to his parents. Now, what do you suppose you should do with a son that is disrespectful to, your, to his parents? According to the Torah, give him time out take away his computer, not let him email for a while. No, it's a little bit more drastic in the Torah. The Torah says you should take him to the elders and say, my son doesn't listen to me. And not only that, but he's a glutton and a drunkard. And the elders are then to take that son and take him into the center of the town and have him stoned to death. You're supposed to take your son to the elders for being disobedient and disrespectful and have him stoned to death? And why does the Torah bring us a question like this? Perhaps, I was that disrespectful son a few times. 
And if my parents had done what the Torah tells them to do, I wouldn't be here now. I would have been stoned to death in front of the elders. I've been asked this question many times, and I asked the question myself. Why would the Torah put such a drastic punishment? Perhaps, perhaps we're meant to think about what we do with our children. We're meant to think about communication. We're meant to think about what, what is disrespectful? Why is the child not listening to us? How are we taking responsibility for it? If someone were to take a child to the elders and say, my son is a glutton and a drunkard, the elders might just say, who's giving him the food and drink? Who's making him a glutton and a drunkard? And maybe, just maybe, the parent might think a little bit more before labeling the child as a disbehaving child. Maybe the parent might look a little more at his or her own responsibility as to how we raise children in order to help them, in order to help them listen to us. You see, the Torah has lots of different laws, and it's also cryptic, that we are meant to think about it. We are given free will, and the Torah has specific laws that not everybody follows exactly. In fact, in this Torah portion, it also talks about not favoring one child over another. Well, that seems to make sense, but if you go back in the Torah, you see that Abraham favored one son over the other. In fact, the Torah portion says, this Torah portion, Deuteronomy, says that you have to give special honor to the oldest son. And Abraham, his oldest son was Ishmael, and he gave special privileges to Isaac. And Isaac grew up and gave special privileges to Jacob, his second son. And then Jacob had 12 sons and a daughter but his favorite was Joseph. And of course, if you go further back into Genesis, perhaps God's self started that legacy of favoritism by accepting Abel's gift over Cain's and causing this tension. And I think that part of what the Torah tells us is to look at what the Torah says and read it carefully and make decisions, because if you do make a different kind of decision, you have the consequences to follow. And those consequences are sometimes very strong tensions in your family. This same Torah portion also talks about returning lost articles. If you see an ox or a mule wandering off that belongs to your neighbor, you must take it and take it back to your neighbor. You must take that responsibility, not take it for yourself, but take it back to your neighbor. But what if that animal is injured or lame? Well, of course you don't want it. Ha ha, but the Torah also says you must take that animal and take it with you and care for it until it is better. And so many of the laws, the paragraph ends with, Remember that you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You were once, we were once, the ones who were put down. We were once the ones who were needy. This passage, this Torah portion also tells us that if you're plowing your field and you miss a spot, and there are a few things that you don't, that you don't pick up, don't go back and get them. Leave them for the widows and the orphans. Leave them for the hungry so that they don't have to come and beg that they can, without shame, come and pick up what they need. It's filled with things that may feel contradictory. And yet, when it comes to treating others, this is where the Torah gets very specific. That a laborer 
is supposed to be paid on the day that he does his work because he needs those wages. That if someone borrows something from you and is in debt to you and you go to collect, you don't go into his home to collect it. You stay outside and let him come to you to give dignity to others. And so that's why when I study this portion and all the different laws, there's some that I understand better than others. There's some that I struggle with. But then I get to the end of the Torah portion. And the very end of the Torah portion, and to me, the beginnings and the endings of things are always significant. The end of the Torah portion, after so many times of saying, treat the stranger kindly, treat the laborer kindly, treat the widow and orphan kindly, because you were strangers in the land of Egypt, it says, remember what Amalek did to you on your journey after you left Egypt. How undeterred by fear of God, he surprised you on the march, and you were famished and weary, and he cut down all the stragglers. Therefore, when the Lord your God grants you safety from all your enemies around you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you, you shall blot the memory of Amalek from under heaven. Do not forget. All right. You know me. You know that I want to embrace the stranger, that I want to bring my heart to all, and that I embrace that part of the Torah that says treat the stranger as your own. And it seems like that we're treating all the strangers just fine, except for the ones who are called the Amalekites. That the Amalekites were supposed to blot from our memory. We're supposed to never forget what they did to us. And it reminds me of holding a grudge. Okay, it was a long time ago. We were coming through the desert. They didn't know us. They were ignorant about who we were. Maybe they mistreated us. But can't we get over it? A wise man once told me a grudge, holding a grudge, is like drinking a tiny amount of poison every day and waiting for somebody else to die. What good is it to hold a grudge? Why do we have this Torah that tells us, be kind to the stranger, but not the Amalekite. Over 20 years ago, I think the year was 1994, right around the time that this Torah portion was being read, an Orthodox Jewish man by the name of Baruch Goldstein went into a mosque where Muslims were praying and shot and killed 39 people presumably thinking he was following the Torah, that those Muslims praying in the mosque were the descendants of the Amalekites who we needed to rid the world of. And I could never accept that. I could never accept that my Torah would advocate genocide. We know about genocide. We know about those who try and destroy us. Why would we try and destroy them? The rest of the Torah says, treat the stranger kindly. And so I've struggled for a long time with this passage about the Amalekite. Until I began to think about that the Amalekite is not necessarily a race of people. But the Amalek that the Torah talks about is that hatred and ignorance that causes people to create violence out of ignorance. If the Amalekites saw us coming through their land and we were strangers and they didn't know who we were and they attacked us, it's that attitude that is Amalek. It's that attitude of striking against a stranger without creating a friendship. That we have the opportunity to rid the world of the attitude of the Amalekite. Not to kill the people, to kill those feelings of hatred. To rid the world, to blot out the memory. The beginning of the paragraph says, remember what the Amalek did to you. The end of it says, do not forget. We remember and we don't forget. 
but we do have the power to make changes. And every time where it says, treat the stranger as one of your own, for you are strangers the land of Egypt. That is the most repeated commandment in the whole Torah. Perhaps, God willing, we find a way that even the most difficult enemy becomes not a stranger. That we are not a stranger to them. Because that is what causes hatred. Ignorance, not knowing each other. And so Torah is learning. Learning is blotting out ignorance. And so when I read these words, blot out the memory of the Amalekite, I say, let's blot out the hatred and the ignorance that causes people to do each other wrong. Shabbat Shalom. We offer a prayer for healing, also composed by Debbie Friedman. Ellie's going to sing it for us. The first stanza, and then we'll pause to add specific names, and those who are thinking about specific names can put them in the chat box, and we'll bring all those who we're praying about into our hearts. Pray for Alice Kaufman, Arnold Farber, Bela but Meda Bryna, Baruch Ben Bracha, Bina but Malka, Brian Goldberg, Bruce Kofrin, Kai Rebus, Dale Vine, David Ben Shani, David Keith, Duty Muse, Edith Flyer, Frank Lepost. La Postada, David Rudd, Jay Rogers, Bob Tickman, Ed Cheek, Floyd Truitt, Frida Beeler, Jenya Gottfried, Hazel Ash, Ida Silverstein, Iris Kelly, Irma Freudenreich, Jane Wills, John Bassett, Joaquin Correa, John Miller, John Van Nada, Lawrence Levy, Mikhail Ben Avraham Vasara, Scott Peters, Lisa Lappin, Bob Von Minden, Louise Pennington, Malka Batyeta, Marilyn Padveen, Mike Box, Neil Davis, Norm Bader, Crystal Sigsby, Paul Varner, Phil Goodman, Richard Weisberg, Ron Feller, Rose Lerner, Rosalind Mandel, Sandy Kurlander, Sandra Brooks, Sheila Schumann, Stacy Parker, Tom Graff, Tadras Ben Shani, Vicki Van Nada, Rhoda Dubin, Philip Sanders, Chuck Thrall, Barbara Gilbert. For all the names that have been said and the names that haven't been said. For all those we have the courage to say aloud or the discretion or to type into a chat box or the discretion to say silently in our hearts. For all those for whom we pray and those who have no one to pray for them, may all our prayers be heard.
We add T. We add T. Deemer to that to that list. Sorry for the noise there. Don't know why that's doing that. And so we bring our hearts to those who come before us. We acknowledge those who passed away in our community in years past in the month of August. Among them, Arthur Abraisley. Lawrence Clems, L L I'm sorry, Pat, Lorraine Clems, Irene Sarah Macaluso, Marlene Salkin, Leon Bluestein, Marshall, Marshall Solomon, Rodney Abraisley, William Bolofsky, Susie Hensley Christman, Olive Bricker, Irving Simmons, Samuel Rosenfield, Juanita Adams, Anna Maria Ijak, Lucy Mueller, Lillian Blumen, Jechen Khan, Estella DeLapp, Leonard Farber, Abraham Marcus, David Rappaport, Marilyn Cash, Donna Koresh, Jacob Berger, Walter Weintraub, Gerald Hine, Rhoda Davis Hart, George Gerson, Sammy Zirazuski. Virginia Zakes, Harriet Feld, and those more recently, including Shirley Lund, Sherry Podveen, Brian Podveen, Myrta Morquin, Lev Rosenberg, Catherine Malloy, Chris Zakes. For all those with whom we connect, this is how we do it. We say Kaddish. We thank God for bringing dear ones into our lives. We remember and we strengthen each other. However, you're comfortable reciting the Kaddish. Yitkadal v'yitkadash shamei rabba. V'yalma divrach yirute v'yamlich malchute. V'chaye chon uv'yomei chon uv'chaye dechon beit Yisrael. Bagala uvizman kari viamru amen. Yehe shme rabba mavarach le onam ome amaya. Yit barach vish tabach vit paar vit ramam vit ase. Vit adar vit ale vit alal shme de kudisha brihu. Le elam in kobir hatava shirata. Tushba hatava nechamata. Dami ran bi alma viamru amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shamaya. The chaim alenu vi alko yisrael viamru amen. O se shalom bin Ramav, hu ya se shalom, aleinu vial ko Yisrael, vial ko yoshvei tevel, v'yamru amen. May the one who brings peace to all, bring comfort and peace to all who are grieving. And we all say, amen. And now we have simchas, happy things. Who's got a simcha to share, either on mute or put it in the in the chat box. We, we've, got, we've got some people visiting from far away. It's a simcha that Ellie is here and her father and mother too. Yay, yay. I, it's a simcha that uh, Esther Friedman's here from the Woodlands. We always like seeing Esther. Hooray. Is anybody here joining our service for the very, very first time? Go ahead and unmute yourself and say hello if you like. And if you don't like, you don't have to. Hi. Welcome. Hi, from Nashville. From Nashville. Hooray. 
<laughs> I from San Antonio. From Thanks. San Antonio, hooray. So for all the blessings that we have, the blessings, I, I had been from the Woodlands too. Oh, Steve Heller's birthday right. was August was 21st. Good. Yes, who, who was that? There was me, I was muted. Oh, hey Ben. Is that, you oh my goodness, is that Ben, um, Ben Rudd? No. Ben Bauer. No, Ben Rudd's not here. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay, welcome, Ben. <laughs> he, want, he wanted to be, but he couldn't make it. Yes. So, on the 21st last week was Steve Heller's birthday. Yeah, right. Barbara decided to type that in. I appreciate it. Um, I uh, wasn't with y'all last week uh, on Friday, when, but... Uh, yeah, I'm here today. Is it true that it's your 62nd birthday? Um, I'd rather I'd rather put it as President Reagan paraphrasing him. Uh, it's the 30th anniversary of my 32nd birthday. Okay. okay. All right. Well, the, because the 62nd birthday is the minute birthday, so the 32nd birthday is the half a minute birthday. <laughs> Yes. Thank you, Dan. Yes. And Jamie, I... It, Jamie, um, it's not Weinberger, J Jamie Penn. Yes, Jamie Penn, Hi's niece, is going to Israel for a year. What, a, what an exciting journey that's going to be. All right. Bon anniversaire. Ah, the, Chris, Chris is wishing you a happy birthday in French. Chris is a man who knows many different languages. Yes. All right. So for all the blessings that we're celebrating, whether we whether we say them aloud or whether we just know it in our hearts. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam shehechianu v'kiyamanu v'egiyanu l'azman hazeh. Blessed are you, God, ruler of all, who keeps us in life, sustains us, enabling us to reach this joyous time, and we say amen. Uh, a, few, uh, a few important announcements. Uh, we, first of all, Thank you again the, for Ellie to be here. There are a number of people uh, who have been contributing to our programming funding, and we are very grateful to be able to bring in some guest artists. Uh, next week, we have someone volunteering her time. Jean Mandel is going to be singing again, like she did a couple weeks ago, but it's a special service next week, uh, sponsored by Casting Terrio in loving memory of her husband, Tom, uh, who was a very, very beloved member of our synagogue and his legacy stays with us. And so we're delighted that Jean will be singing for that service as she was also a good friend of Tom Terrio. Um, we had a very, very uh, successful drop off a, at the synagogue last Sunday where over 20 cars came, donated, food for Humble Area Assistance Ministries, picked up high holiday prayer books and schools, also donated school supplies and school books. Our first day of Sunday school is this Sunday at 10 o'clock and we're going to do it over Zoom and we're excited about that. And every, all members of the temple should have received an email about recording a brief message or volunteering to do a part for our recorded high holidays. So if you did not get that email, please send, uh, send Stacy at admin at tbthumble.org. And, and so we're going to be doing a um, pre-recorded high holidays. The Cantor and I have been working very hard on it with the blessings, the helps of of Mike Miller and Bruce Pollard. We have a special prayer for Mike tonight. He's, he's not doing so well, but he's having some tests done. And so we hold him in our prayers. Um, and, but we do want participation. We're asking people to, we're asking people to, uh, we're, we're asking people to take, take some selfies so we can see your picture. Or don't take the selfie, but send us an old picture where you looked great. Um, send us your high school graduation picture if you want. But we want to have a montage of our members so that we can see each other. Um, we're going to do some special things where we're going to be able to see people blessing the Torah 
or lighting candles. If you can take a picture, lighting candles, that's going to be a special part of the service as well. Um, so please respond to those emails and be part of the service. It's going to, it's going to be special. You know, we, we think, now, well, we're going to be separate, but we are going to be together. It's going to be a really, really special one. And I hope everybody is able to log in. Um, and if you should happen to miss it or come late, we'll record it. And so you'll be able to see it later. Um, did I? Oh, and next. So I already said about next Friday being the special service in honor of Tom Terrio. Next Sunday, very special evening, Arab Labor Day. Sunday evening at 7.30, we're going to have a rabbi comedian. No, not me. Rabbi Robert Haas of Savannah, Georgia, who used to be at Emmanuel, has become a stand-up comic, and he's really funny. And so he's going to be performing for us Sunday night, Air of Labor Day, September 6th. Um, it's going to be a great show. We'll learn a little bit about Jewish humor, and we'll laugh. So that is terrific. And then on, um, and then the next Sunday, we're going to do another time to drive by the synagogue, donate for needy people. And if you haven't picked up your High Holiday prayer book, you'll pick it up then. The High Holidays, we use Gates of Repentance. It is available for purchase on, uh, from ccarpress.com. Uh, and so if you'd rather buy a brand new one, or if you want to take one of our gently used ones, you can have it. If you'd like to make a donation, that will certainly help. Um, and so that is all the announcements, I believe. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. One more. Thank you. Hi. Um, you also have the opportunity on the 13th to pick up a challah from Three Brothers. Hi, what is the deadline for ordering it? Is it the, the 10th of September? Uh, I think the 8th. Yes, it's in the, the newsletter. It'll be in the newsletter. The 8th of September, if you order and send in a check, $10 per challah for eat. You can have a plain challah or a raisin challah. Please designate which kind you want. We've had one order already, and they asked for one of each. And so um, to get a genuine, round, high holiday challah, um, you can purchase it by September 8th and pick it up on the 13th. All right. So um, I am going to just give a brief blessing um, before I, before um, Ellie sings the final song, which is a beautiful one. Shema koleinu Adonai Eloheinu Ruach HaOlam. Dear God in heaven, hear our voice and hear our prayers. As we struggle through the Torah and we struggle through all our journeys and our wanderings, let us be able to read the entire Torah. Find those parts that are difficult for us and reconcile. And find people who are difficult for us and reconcile with them as well. For communication is key. We all have the heart that you have given us. Let us use it wisely and do our wanderings and our journeys with a spirit of kindness and remembering that we have been strangers and it's time to find all those who will not be strangers to us. God blesses you and protects you. God's face shines upon you and is gracious unto you. God's presence is with you to give you peace. May this be God's will. And we say, Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah. Oops. Sorry, I muted you. I mute again. Hallelujah.
Oh, you're muted. Kol Hanshama Tehalel Yah, the voice of the Spirit and our prayers. Savrei Lechayim. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam, morei peri hagafen. Blessed are you, God, creator of the world, who brings us fruit from the vine. Amen. And Lauren told me to cut the challah in half so I don't destroy the whole thing. But here is a beautiful challah. It's not from three brothers. It's from one wife. Hamotzi lechem min ha'aretz. We give thanks to God for bread. Our voices rise in song together as our joyful prayer is said. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam. Hamotzi lechem min ha'aretz. Amen. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom.